Let's dive into how you can create a flexible checkout workflow using Stripe and Billship. We'll be using a Stripe payment link to sell premium generated content to our customers. Specifically, we'll offer a randomly generated microservice idea complete with a business plan generated with GPT. Now let's get started. In Billship, we can get started quickly by selecting the Stripe checkout completed template. You'll notice that we have a couple of validation errors. This is because we need to supply the secret keys required by our nodes before we can actually deploy our workflow. First, let's select our Stripe secret key for the Stripe webhook trigger. If you don't have a Stripe secret key already created, then you can easily create one by going to secrets, add secret, and here you can create your Stripe secret. Now let's also select our Stripe secret for the checkout session node. Moving on, we also need to select our browserless API key. And in case you're wondering, we use the browserless API as an easy way to convert HTML to PDF in our workflow. Next, we need to select our OpenAI secret key. And now we have to select our browserless API key for a second time. Lastly, we need to select our recent secret. Resend is an easy to use service for sending emails at scale. And that's all the configuration we need to do. Let's now deploy our workflow. And after a few seconds, we can see that the deployment was successful. Great. Now let's take some time to go through this workflow node by node. In Billship, each workflow consists of a trigger and multiple nodes. A trigger is responsible for triggering the execution of a workflow. In this example, we're using the Stripe webhooks trigger. This trigger provides a fully automated setup for listening to real-time updates from various Stripe events. If we take a look at the event input, we can see that this is where we can specify an array of events that we want to listen for. In this case, we're just listening for checkout session completed events. But if you're curious about the various events you can add here, then be sure to go through the list of supported events in the Stripe documentation. Saying that this trigger provides a fully automated Stripe setup means that you don't have to leave Billship to register the webhook endpoint in the Stripe dashboard. Billship does this automatically for you when you first deploy the workflow. Now let's dive into the actual logic of our workflow. In Billship, the logic of our workflow is defined by nodes and a combination of these nodes is what ultimately forms a complete workflow. The first node in our workflow is a Firestore collection query node that returns all the documents from the orders collection where the ID is equal to the Stripe event ID and where the completed flag is equal to true. This is our first look at an expression value. In Billship, an expression allows you to create dynamic output values by combining the values returned from a truer or other nodes. The dynamic value being inserted here is the order ID, which we get from the event payload returned by the truer. As we continue going through the other nodes, you'll see that we rely heavily on expression values to create dynamic input values and dynamic output values. Next, we have a branch node. This node allows us to conditionally execute nodes based on a condition. Here, the condition is checking if we have any existing orders using the results from the previous node. If we do, then we simply return. Otherwise, we continue executing the other nodes in the workflow. The reason we're doing this is because Stripe can send the same event multiple times in cases of failures and we don't want to process the same order multiple times. Up next, we have a Stripe utility node that will return all the line items from the incoming checkout session. The return line items will contain details such as the product description, price, and quantity, which we will use in the following node to generate the order confirmation PDS. After getting the line items, we want to generate an order confirmation PDS this node takes as input the HTML we want to convert to PDF. We pass our HTML as an expression. And for the order confirmation PDF, 
we want to show the user the order number, the order date, and the line items. Now we want to generate the premium content that was initially purchased. As mentioned earlier, we are selling GPT generated Microsoft ideas with a complete business plan. To generate this content, we are using the OpenAI chat node. We can see how we are instructing the model by looking at the system prompt. And at the end of the prompt, we're telling the model to return its responses in JSON format. The JSON response will have two fields, title and content, which will contain the actual generated HTML content. Now, because the OpenAI chat node returns a JSON string, we then need to convert it to a valid JavaScript object. This is precisely what the string to JSON node is doing. With our content generated and converted to a valid JavaScript object, we can now convert it to a PDF. Just as before, we're passing the HTML as an expression. We have a basic HTML structure and styling and add some padding. And in the body, we're inserting the generated content that's being returned from the previous node. Next, we have a Nada Strike utility node that returns the customer details, such as their name, email, address, and so on. This information will be used in the following node where the order will be delivered via email. We are now at a point where we can email the customer, the order confirmation, and more importantly, the premium generated content. For this, we are using the resend node, which uses the resend emailing service to send these PDFs as attachments. The to field is an expression that is using the email address returned from the previous node. The subject is an expression as well. Here we're dynamically building the email subject to include the title of the generated idea. For the HTML body, we're dynamically inserting two values, the customer name and the order date. We then pass the two attachments as an array. The first is the order confirmation and the second is the generated idea. Nearing the end of the workflow, we want to keep track of the order in our Firestore database. Using the Firestore create document node, we save the order in the orders collection and we're passing the data to save as an expression. And more importantly, we're setting the completed flag to true. This prevents processing the same order more than once. Finally, we have a return node that simply returns an OK status code indicating a successful execution of the workflow. Let's see a quick demo of our workflow in action. When we use our Stripe payment link, we'll be redirected to the Stripe checkout form. Here we'll see a preview and the price of the item we are about to purchase. After filling out all the required fields and clicking pay, this checkout event will be sent to our workflow. And shortly after, we'll receive an email in our inbox containing the order confirmation and the purchase content both as attachments. But what if you want to handle your Stripe checkout events differently? Say instead of emailing premium content, you want to update a membership or increment user credits. Well, this is where BillShip's low-code toolings really shine. Whatever requirements or logic you have in mind, you can easily implement using any of the existing nodes from the Nodeverse or easily generate it with AI. Let's look at an example where we have a credit-based system where users are allowed to use our online service at the expense of their account credits. Once they've used up all their credits, they'll be required to purchase more in order to continue using our service. Let's create a basic workflow for handling this checkout requirement. As expected, we'll first add our Stripe webhooks trigger, and we'll set it up to listen for the same checkout session completed event. Next, we'll add another Stripe utility node that will extract and return the metadata object from the checkout event. Most Stripe events contain metadata, which is useful for storing additional structured information. For example, this is where you could pass your user's corresponding unique identifier for your system. If we're creating a checkout session from an external application, be it a mobile app or website, we can expect the customer's unique identifier to be included in the metadata object. 
See creating a checkout session in the Stripe documentation for further details on how to use metadata. The customer's unique identifier is important to us because this is how we'll be able to find the appropriate user credits document in our Firestore collection and increment the credits field. Now that we have the metadata details, we need to increment the user credits. Let's see how we can generate a node to do this using AI. Select the generate with AI option. And for the prompt, let's say, I need a node that increments a field value in a Firestore collection. Then click generate. And after a few seconds, we see our generated node. How cool is that? We can take a quick glance at the code if you're wondering what that looks like. Great, now we just need to fill in the input fields. First, for the collection part, we'll enter user credits. Next, we'll derive the document ID as an expression value from our metadata node. And we can assume the field name is UID. And the field we want to increment is the credit field. And for now, let's just say that we want to increment by one. And that's all the values we need to enter for the generated node. If you notice, we didn't write or touch a single line of code. Instead, we configured the node entirely via its parameters. Finally, we simply return an OK status code indicating a successful execution of the workflow. And there you have it, a fully customized checkout workflow for Stripe that caters to your own specific requirements. Get started quickly by using our Stripe checkout template and easily customize it as you wish using our Generate with AI feature or by integrating with many of the existing nodes we have to offer. And as you just witnessed, with Bullshift's local tools at your fingertips, creating an extensive and highly customizable Stripe checkout workflow becomes a simple task that can be done in a matter of minutes. Stay tuned for upcoming templates and resources to help you jumpstart your next major project. That's all for now. See you in the next one.